What's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you the easiest way to disassemble a Benchmade bug out or any axis log knife and replace the Omega springs if you broke a spring or replace the lock bar, whatever you need to do, any disassembly, this is the guide for it. So there's some things you're going to need first, um, obviously the knife. If you broke your Omega springs, you're going to need the replacement springs. So usually if you want to do it through Benchmade, you have to send them the knife um, and they put new strings in for you. It takes a while. If you don't want to do that, then you can buy them from uh, an aftermarket seller from Etsy or eBay, which is what I did. And you're going to need something to keep your screws in. So I just use an Altoids tin. Uh, this razor blade is if you have dried Loctite on the pivot screw. I'm going to take that out. You need a Torx driver. So this is a Weeha stubby. And the bits, you make sure you have good quality bits. So if they're too soft, they will strip out. So make sure you have good quality bits so they don't ruin your screws. Um, for Benchmade, you need a T6 for the body. And the T10 for the pivot. Uh, and then some masking tape for the blade. Some Q-tips if you want to uh, clean inside of alcohol. Blue Loctite, you can use the liquid or the glue stick kind. And some lubricant, I use KPL. And then if you want to replace the lock bar, obviously, replacement lock bar. Uh, make sure you're in a well-lit area. This is pretty well-lit um, for YouTube buyers that don't have super good equipment right now, so... There is shadow, so hopefully you can see what's going on. Um, let's see, it's kind of out of frame here. Sorry about that. So this all down. Okay. So, uh, and if you want to add graphite, if you have lock stick, this is your lock stick. You can use just a normal pencil um, to add graphite to the tang and the uh, around here. If you open the knife around this area, but. I'm not gonna do that today. So the first step you wanna do after you've done your supplies is obviously take apart the knife. So I like to do the pivot first. So make turn like this. And if it is Loctite, there'll be a little bit of resistance. Um, obviously you never wanna use red Loctite, you always wanna use blue. Keep the T10 pivot there. And for bug out, you don't have to take off the pocket clip like you do on the Mini Osborne to get access to the middle screw here. And I'm just gonna, and you don't have to take out the stand off either. So you just take out this side. You only need to take off one side of the scales when you're disassembling the knife. I was doing a scale swap, obviously. And it doesn't matter if, like, which screw goes where and you put it back together. Uh, the only screw it does matter for are the pocket clip screws. These are T6, but they're a little longer than the body screws. So you uh, want to make sure you don't get them mixed up. Actually, I should have done this before unscrewing it, but if you're new to doing this, a good thing to do is to tape your blade so it doesn't, you know, cut you. Because when you're taking apart the knife, sometimes the blade, like if you take out the pivot or something, the blade could just fall onto your finger. And you don't want that to happen. So I will admit sometimes I'm get, I get lazy though and I don't do this. And I've been okay, obviously, for the most part. When I first was assembling, disassembling these knives, definitely had to tape it. Now I'm a little better with it. But just do it like that so you can't cut yourself. Tip is still a bit sharp if you really tried to poke yourself, but it should be fine. Take off the scale. So you're going to usually have some, like, dirt and stuff right here, which you can clean with a rag, with some alcohol. So, 
take some alcohol like this, put it on the rag, and you can just clean out. So it's, it's obviously not gonna come off. And don't worry about getting alcohol on, on this is G10. G10 is extremely highly re chemically resistant. So that's a scale. Um, so then once you have it like this, you still have the T6 bit, right? So you just put in this hole right here, the pivot is you push, and then that will push out the, the female end of the pivot, uh, which is D shaped. So uh, as you can see, there's a flat part on the top. So when you put it back in, you need to make sure that flat part is still oriented on the top or else it won't go in. Um, take the blade out. See, those are the two phosphor bronze washers. And then to take out the lock bar. On this specific knife, you actually need to unscrew the stop pin from the other side right here. Let's do that. Then you have the stop pin, which is also D-shaped. You just pull back on the axis lock like this. And on my obviously on mine this omega spring snapped but you will have a spring right here so i'll show you on the other side how to, how to take out the spring it's pretty easy so then you have the in in layer uh, liner technically i don't want to say that bug on the other side you need to take out this screw right here okay. so yeah so your knife will look like this on the other side just imagine it flipped around the little uh this part of the spring will be in this notch, so you just push it forward and it'll come out. Um, if you're gonna switch the lock bar out, it's really simple. All you do is just push up on the spring to take it off, and then you you know put take the new lock bar, put the springs on. Um, so this is the old spring. This thing didn't break, obviously, but I'm gonna just put the two new ones on. And this is an aftermarket lock bar, it's a stainless steel. The one that comes with the bug out is titanium. Uh, I switched it out because titanium on steel is not a pleasant combo. Titanium is softer than steel and it gets a bit sticky and could even develop flat spots over time. So now I have the new springs here. Um, so what I'm gonna do, and before you obviously put it back together, you want to make a note of which side of the washer is facing the blade. So for me, I can see one side, once you break the knife in, one side will be shinier than the other. And it's not focusing very well. But let's see, you take a look at this side. You can't, I mean, you can't really tell with this, to be honest. But there's one side that basically has rings in it, like that have been worn into by the blade opening and closing. And you most likely be able to tell on your own knife. And that side has to be touching the blade. So for instance, like this side, on the other side, kind of has that black like dirt and it's a little darker. And then this side of that washer is shinier and more smooth. Doesn't have any of that black stuff on it. That's the side that should be touching the blade. It doesn't matter which washer goes on which side as long as the worn side is touching the blade and the non-worn side is touching the liner. And you can clean those with alcohol if you want to. Um, I this I don't know if this is supposed to be a detent hole. There's no detent ball in this, in this knife, but I just put a drop of lube on there anyway when I put it back together. And I do lube both sides of the washers. If you only want to lube one side, make sure you lube the side that's touching the blade, obviously. So you want to get your liner and well, obviously lock the lock bar first. So you just put this here, whatever. Let's see. So basically you want to have, there's an, an Omega spring, there's this little notch right here. That's the side you want to be facing inward, so like this. Right. What the fuck? Just like that. I don't know why this doesn't fit like as well as the 
bench made ones. Huh. Well, anyway, hopefully this works. Took a while to get these. But yeah, you want to make sure they're both in like this, basically. The back looks like that because these notches are what's going to go into here. So, all right, so you get it, you get one of them through like that. All right, so you have one of them through. If you didn't see that again, I'll show you. You just put the left one in if you're going from here. Obviously, you're going to put the, the side that's away from you in first. And then you have it like this, right? So all you got to do is put this little notch into there. That's all you have to do. Now, you want to put... So, and the YouTube videos I've seen, especially Nick Shabazz, he will put everything together first, and the, including the washers in here, and then try to slide the blade in. And I, when I was first taking apart my bug, I was really hard to do that. Um, but there is something called the sandwich method. Basically, you put everything together layer by layer, which is from... I learned from a Reddit user named Bolton Bites, which is what, who I bought the 945 from. Um, he makes a lot of bug outs, so he's a lot of experience with this stuff. So first, you're going to put in the pivot, female end of the pivot. Make sure that the flat part is on top. Then you're going to put the liner over that. Then you're going to put the stop pin in, which this is a bit tricky to do. Again, you want to make sure the flat part on top right here, let's see, is on top. This little flat part. And then you will also know if it's getting correctly because, at least on mine, I think they're all, they're all black, but you put it in like this. So you will know if it's incorrectly if, let's see, huh. well there's a part on it where the blade has, I don't know if you can see this, worn off, so right there, this little like line like where the coating come off, that part should be touching the blade. I learned from a Reddit user named Bolton Bites, which is what, who I bought the ninth experience with this stuff. So first you're gonna put in the pivot, female end of the pivot, make sure that the flat part is on top. Then you're gonna put the liner over that. Then you're gonna put the stop pin in, which this is a bit tricky to do. Again, you want to make sure the flat part on top right here, let's see, is on top, this little flat part. And then you will also know if it's getting correctly because, at least on mine, I think they're all, they're all black, but you put it in like this. So you will know if it's incorrectly, if, let's see, huh. well there's a part on it where the blade has, I don't know if you can see this, worn off, so right there, this little like line like where the coating come off, that part should be touching the blade. Huh. Well, maybe it, maybe it doesn't matter, but I, I'm, for D-shaped stuff, definitely the flat part on top. Um, and then you also wanna put the body screw in here. So everything that's on this side is done, like screw-wise, you don't have to worry about it again. So put that screw in there. Then, comes the first washer and the blade. So again, this side is what you want to be touching the liners. You can see it's all black and has a, it doesn't have like 
rings in it worn into it. This side is smooth and shiny. That side you want to touch the blade. So when you want to lubricate it, KPL is a nice needle applicator here. You can either put a little bit, you want to use a very small amount, obviously. You can either put a little bit on the washer itself or on the lining. I will just put a little on the washer. And then you just spread it around like this. And if you don't want to use the needle, you can also use like uh, a toothpick, like a Victorinox toothpick, like this. One of these, you know, spread it around. And then just put it on. And then same thing for the part that's touching the blade. You want to clean off any excess lubricant. And when you take apart a knife, if you take apart the knife for the first time, it's going to be pretty dirty. So you can clean everything off with rubbing alcohol. And even polish the washers if it's new. So then you pull back on the access bar. And then slip the blade in. And... You can also put a drop of lube on here. I don't, I guess that'll do it, but there's no detent bowl. I don't know. If there is a detent bowl, definitely lubricate that part. I'm just going to do it if for good measure. Um, same thing with this side. So make sure this side is touching it and not this side. That side should not be touching it. So now this obviously you want to do lubricate the side touching it first because it's the other way around. Put there. And then put some here. Use this. Okay. So that's done. Then you are going to slip this. On like that. Thread the spring through here. Hold it down. See, it already wants to come off. Okay. So once you have the lock part right here, you turn it, pull back. Line everything up and make sure this this pivot is out of the way. You press it in. And this is also why it is easier to do without the spring on first. If you don't want to do that, you can keep the spring off, then put the, put the lock on, then put the spring on on the outer side. Cause it is, it is easier to do that way, so I don't know why I wanted to do it this way this time. Okay. Get it in. Same thing as last time. Just put the notch right there. As you can see, and then it should be good. Put the other scale on, put all the body screws in, and I do not Loctite my handle screws because there's no really reason to. They do come Loctite in the factory, but being T6, they have the highest probability of stripping. And if you have to go against the torque of Loctite every time you want to take it apart, you know, there's a, a likelihood you might strip them. And I mean, you don't really, the only thing you gain from Loctiting is the pivot because you want it to stay in that place. These ones, I mean, if they come loose, just tighten them a little bit. They're not going to come loose and just fall out though. Okay. Now, this is the tricky part 
of the, the reassembly, which is tuning in the pivot. So what I do is, some people will like, like to put the Loctite first, then tune in, you have 10, 10 minutes to, to get it right. But I will first put the pivot in without Loctite, tune in and see if there is a spot where I do like it. I have a lot of trouble with this, but I'm very OCD about blade play and stuff. I'll just show you a rough way of how I do it. Um, I'll take the tape off now because I don't need to worry about this. And I use masking tape because it doesn't leave any residue like, like duct tape would. So you don't have to worry about your blade being all sticky. So this, when it's like this, way too tight, right? Now I'm going to move. And Benchmade knives have very... Uh, very, um, the tolerances are very, like, small. So you have, you want to turn the pivots to a very small amount once you get to, like, you know, the area where it's a sweet spot. So right now, let's see. So, a shit ton of blade play. You actually feel it. Turn a little more. Too much blade play still a lot with these knives sometimes i feel like there's like it goes between a lot of blade play and now see and now it's way too tight to open still way too tight and this is already a broken in knife too so when you get a new knife it will probably not have super good action when you first get it right here pretty good action play a little bit so i will turn it like literally this much like you can't even you can't even see be like okay you can't even see on camera it's the smallest possible turn and still No play now, but it's like these springs are so strong. Like the the detent is crazy. Like look at this. It feels almost like a slip joint. Look. Oh, so that's pretty fucking good actually so you do that and my centering is good on this knife if it wasn't you open it and say again it goes too far to the right you open it up push the blade to the right loosen the body screws retighten the body screws and when i obviously resemble the knife i like to check all the screws that they're tight enough you don't want to over tighten them we want to make sure these are so we tighten it quite a bit. Don't want to strip these. I've, you know, my bench train screws have not stripped, luckily, because you know if they're too loose, maybe they could have blade play. Uh, but I mean, this knife seems to be actually pretty good now. Um, so yeah, that's how you do it. If you want to lock tight it, now. I don't know if this is just me, but I had a problem with the knife. Like I feel like Loctite will get into the pivot and um, kind of mess it up, and then it, the action will be as good as it was when I just uh, opened it. Because where I have it at right now, where I just got it to, is really good, right? So what I want to do is keep it there. So what I do, you know, take the screw, and this has some dried Loctite on it. Um, right there, you can see, All right? So to take it off, the best thing I found is a razor blade. You don't need to do this every time. Uh, if you have a lot of Loctite within the, like, many threads, then you should do this because then the new Loctite won't get into all the threads and it won't 
be able to hold it in place. Plus, the dried stuff will make it harder for you to for the threads to grip. So the adjustments won't really be as accurate. But when it's all bunched up at the top here, it doesn't matter as much. So what I like to do, first you want to shake the Loctite so you get all the ingredients mixing. And you can just, you know, take some paper towel like this. And you want to put like the smallest amount and you only want to put it, you can just put it like on one spot of the screw because when you turn it, it's going to, you know, spread the route evenly. So you can literally like that. And then even that, might be too much right so there's like a little you know a little hump right there it's just you can just take that off and like that should be enough get into your knife now you have 10 minutes to dial it in once the 10 minutes are over, you leave it for 24 hours. Don't touch it. And you want to put it somewhere where there's no vibrations or anything, just to make sure. I used to put it on my desk, but then I'm, you know, I'm using the desk and typing and stuff. And, you know, causing a lot of vibrations. Right now it's pretty good. So you can get a little bit. There you go. I mean, it has no play. Drop shut. It's what everyone wants in the world. Boom, like that. And I don't want to mess with it too much because then it will, you know, I feel like it'll mess up the thread locker. But this is a perfect opportunity. It is a little off centered. I don't know if you can see that. A little bit to the right. So, what I'm going to do here open the knife. Push it to the right because it's moving, it's veered to the right, but since I opened it, it turned it 180 degrees. And you just loosen these a little bit on this side. Then retighten them. Now I learned this from the Best Damn EDC channel, from Taylor Martin. And it's worked every time for me. Do that, close it, boom. Perfectly centered. And what that's doing is basically like reseating the liner or something. So it sits correctly, but I did that. I mean, pretty good. Try adjusting it one more. Shut. Okay, good. So now I'm going to leave this knife for 24 hours. Loctite should set, and we're all good. So that is how you replace the Omega Springs, disassemble a bug out or any access lock knife, because all access locks are, as I'm aware of, work the same. The liners are going to be a little different, like the Mini Osborne is going to have longer liners, stuff like that, but overall the same, you know, construction of the lock. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.